Hello and welcome to Climbing Daily and I hope you had a good weekend on lockdown and found something to do. Now, being at home is the perfect time to practice some essential skills. So here's mountain guide Dave Searle taking us through three knots that you need to know. Hello everybody, um, I hope you're all keeping safe and sane through this rather difficult period. Uh, my name's Dave Searle and I'm an IFMGA guide. Um, I'm living out in Chamonix, France at the moment. And some of you more die-hard climbing daily fans might recognize me as one of the previous presenters for the show. And uh, recently Matt and Hugo asked if I could make a video about uh, tying knots. And I thought, well, probably most of you are able to tie the knots that you need to for climbing. But I just wanted to give you some tips and advice on how to tie some of the most popular knots safer, more efficiently, and with a bit more of a process. And this would hopefully push your knot tying up to the next level. So the three knots that we're gonna look at today are the re-threaded figure of eight for tying into the end of a rope. This should be the gold standard knot that you're using to tie in for sport climbing or rock climbing or any type of climbing. That should be the knot that you're using to tie in. The second knot we're going to look at is the clove hitch. Now you probably have a way of tying it, but we're just going to go over how you tie that with one hand and also how you adjust that knot. So you can put more slack in or take more slack out. And the final knot that we're going to have a look at is how we can, how we can join two ropes together, um, what knot we use and how we tie it properly and, and uh, safely. Remember, videos like this are just meant to give you a little bit of extra instruction. And if you really need to learn these skills properly, you should do that with a guide or an instructor and make sure that they really check and tell you what you're doing before you go out and use these knots in a real scenario. But you can practice this at home, get yourself a piece of rope, get yourself a piece of string even, uh, and just practice. Uh, it's a good thing to do for five, 10 minutes a day just to you know, get your knot tying a little bit better. So let's dive in. Now, in order to get this perfect every time, you should have a formula. You should have a way of tying it that you can emulate each time and it should be well practiced. Obviously that practice will come with time climbing, but you could also practice at home with a piece of rope. So what I like to do when we're tying a re-threaded figure of eight is teach a six stage process. So stage one is to set the figure of eight onto the rope. And if you set that at the right distance from the end every time, it'll make the whole process a lot easier and a lot simpler. The second stage is to thread it through the harness. And if you do that in the same way each time, you're much less likely to make mistakes. The third process is to tie the knot. So you're re-threading the figure of eight. And again, if you do that in a certain way, you'll make less mistakes. The fourth is to tighten the knot. Yeah, really tightening, making sure that the whole thing is set nicely. The fifth thing is to then tie the stopper knot at the end of the knot. So the, there's always normally a secondary knot at the end of a figure of eight that you tie to loose to tie, tidy up the end. And then the final, the sixth part of the uh, knot tying process is to check everything and make sure that it's done properly. So let's have a look at that process and I'll give you a couple of little tips about how to do it smoothly and how to do it perfectly each time. Okay, so I've got my harness on, I've got the rope ready here, and what I'm gonna do is set the distance to set the figure of eight onto the rope. And what I like to do is to just hold it onto the top of my belay loop and just let the tail of the rope touch the ground. Now, I appreciate everybody's different height and it might you might need to uh, lengthen that or shorten that or change it slightly, but this works really well for me. Okay, now I've got the point in which I'm gonna set my figure of eight onto the rope, okay? So set the figure of eight. The next stage is to thread it through the harness. Yeah, next stage is to thread the knot back or re-thread the figure of eight. So what I like to do here is make sure it's nice and tight up against the, the harness and make sure it comes on the outside. Yeah, so it's coming on the outside of the knot there. Coming back in around. Coming out like this. Okay, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make sure that this loop here is the same diameter as the belay loop on my harness. Now I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten everything up, 
okay? Double checking here that it, everything's good. I'm then gonna tie the stopper knot. Yeah, so a double fisherman's over the, a fisherman's knot over, over there and make sure that's nice and tight as well. Pulling every strand nice and tight. Okay, and this isn't too long. We don't want this to be much longer than say six inches. We don't want to ever confuse this piece of rope for the actual piece of rope. So make sure this is nice and short each time. Okay, so key points are that it's nice and neat, yet yeah, there should be parallel lines all the way around on the knot. The end of the rope shouldn't be too long, and this should be the same size as the belay loop. So the next knot that I want to talk about is the clove hitch and there's many ways of tying the clove hitch but I want to specifically look at how you tie it with one hand. It's a really useful skill to have and it will definitely help at some point when you're in your climbing uh, and probably make things a bit safer if you're trying to tie one in a bit of a precarious situation. Okay so I've got a bit of an anchor that I've made here and I've clipped a carabiner to it and the gate, the gate is facing over to the right hand side. So in this way, I would use my, my right hand to clip the rope through the gate like this, okay? So now the rope, my rope is coming out of the front of it and the dead rope is coming out the back of the, of the carabiner. Now all I do to tie the, the one-handed clove hitch yeah, is I'm gonna cross over my rope and grab this rope from behind with my thumb facing down. Yeah, now I'm gonna pull this out over the front and clip it in to that carabiner again. Yeah, now when I pull this tight, you can see I've got a clove hitch like that. Yeah, so I'll show you once more. The gate is over to the right. I'm gonna clip the rope in from the right hand side reach down with my thumb facing down, pull it over and clip it into the, into the anchor and pull it nice and tight, okay? So it should be pretty easy to, to figure that one out. Again, if we're doing it over on the, if we were doing it with our left hand, we would clip it in from the left. Yeah, reach over, cross in, and clip that, clip that rope in like that, okay? So just think about crossing over, twisting and clipping the carabiner in. Now once the clove hitch is set like this, you'll notice on the clove hitch there's, there's a piece here which crosses uh, across the carabiner like that. If you grab hold of that part of the of the rope and pull it tight, you'll notice that it pulls both sides of, of the rope tight. And all you need to do is pull the slack out of the side that you want uh, to adjust in. So again, I'll show you that one. To introduce some slack, I would pull that and I'd pull my side through like that. Uh, always make sure you've done your screw gate up, obviously. But yeah, reaching in, grab that piece, pull it tight, pull the slack through. Or to put slack in, reach in like that, and you can extend it out. So the final thing I want to talk about is how we join two ropes together if we were going to abseil down using the ropes uh, in their full length. Now, what I would use here is a overhand and then I'd put another overhand right next to it. So what I do is start with a reasonably long tail, yeah? And I'm gonna set that first overhand knot on the rope, okay? Set it like this, making sure that it's nice and neat all the way around like that. Yeah, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this knot a four-way pull. So I'm gonna pull each individual strand of the rope to tighten the knot up, okay? each individual strand gets pulled. Okay, so now it's nice and neat and nice and tight. We're gonna get another knot in here. And we're gonna get that guy right up against the first one. Yeah, so that way this first knot can't roll open. There's just no way. 
We've also got a nice long tail, so this tail should be minimum the length of your forearm from your fingers, yeah? Uh, and that, that gives it an extra bit of backup as well, should anything move, which it won't. This knot is great because it travels over the surface of the rock a lot easier, so it's less likely to get caught on the way down, less, less likely to get caught into a crack or into a notch in the rock. Using double fishermans to attach the rope, they're a lot more likely to get caught. Uh, and also these are quite easy to undo at the end of it as well. So yeah, that's how you tie them. Make sure you're doing that four-way load and make sure that it's nice and neat and those two knots are nice and close to one another. Once you finish tying the knot, you can then thread the end through and put the knot right up against the anchor. And then when you come down to the bottom, you're pulling on the side that has the knot on it. Just to make sure that you always tie stopper knots in the end of the rope as well, so you can't ever have an accident amp sailing off the end. Okay, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. That's all from me. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Back to Matt. Cheers for that, Dave. So remember, grab yourself a bit of rope, sit on your sofa and have a practice of those three knots and let us know in the comments below if you found that useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.